Welcome to the News Cube. I'm Jay Douglas Barker. In the years immediately following the attacks of 9-11, national sensitivity to the pain involved kept the political parties from overtly misusing the events for their own political ends. As we approach the fifth anniversary of those attacks, we can see that the political moratorium has ended. In order to regain the political upper hand, the Democrats in America must paint the Republicans as inept and even corrupt in their handling of the war on terror. The Republicans, on the other hand, must paint the Democrats as indecisive and even soft on the root cause of terror. It's a little too early in the presidential run-up for the Democrats to reveal any alternative plan for the war. Even if they had one, discussing it now would give the Republicans plenty of time to find problems and pitfalls and to use those against the Democrats in the election. The Republicans know this and are therefore able to use this time to say the Democrats have no plan and therefore are clueless about what they would do in the war if they were given a chance to try. Here at the News Cube, we're simply not interested in political hacking and polarizing party rhetoric. We call on everyone, on all sides, to stop the noise and remember our own humanity. Somewhere, someone needs to stand up for simple, good government, for real justice, and for noble purpose. A pipe dream? Eh, probably. We certainly see nothing like it on the horizon. We can only hope. When we return, we'll take a closer look at one of the root causes of terror. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Walmart comes out of the closet, Brits back ban on big ladies' babies, Iran again defies the UN nuclear deadline, and CNN's Kyra Phillips' sister-in-law is a control freak. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Walmart, the largest retailer in the world, has asked for and received permission to join the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. The NGLCC is a leading promoter of homosexual marriage. Walmart will give homosexual-owned businesses special treatment when making purchases. Companies not owned by homosexuals will be moved down the list. The British Fertility Society is recommending women with a body mass index of 36 and over should not be allowed access to fertility treatment. Underweight women and those classed as just obese should be forced to address their weight just before starting treatment, the society said. Iran's president remained defiant as the UN deadline arrived Thursday for his country to stop enriching uranium, saying Tehran would not be bullied into giving up its right to nuclear technology. Meanwhile, President Bush said there must be consequences for Tehran, adding that the war between Tehran-backed Hezbollah militants and Israel demonstrated that the world now faces a grave threat from the radical regime in Iran. And finally, Kyra Phillips, a CNN anchor, yapped away inside the confines of a bathroom live on air recently, unwittingly upstaging President Bush's speech in New Orleans with the on-air analysis of her husband and the marriage of her brother. Brothers have to be, you know, protective, said Phillips during her speech. Except for mine. I've got to be protective of him. Yeah, he's married, three kids, but his wife is just a control freak. The incident was broadcast nationwide during CNN's live coverage of President Bush's one-year anniversary of Katrina's speech. For more news and information, head on over to PottedMeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. In the year 610 A.D., a prominent Arab businessman named Muhammad declared himself the prophet of the new monotheism, and he set out to convert his fellow tribesmen and women. Although not immediately impressed, the inhabitants of the region were eventually won over, 
and the world of Islam began. In the years following Muhammad's death, a rift developed within Islam over the issue of legitimate succession. It's a long, complex story, but it basically boils down to this. Should the successor to the prophet be someone who was close to Muhammad spiritually or genetically? Those who were of the spiritual ilk and had been his disciples through both good times and bad felt they were best suited to lead the followers into the future. Blood relatives felt that the line of succession was clear beyond any question, and this dispute set the stage for centuries of grief to come. The Sunnis have held the reins of power for centuries. From the beginning, the Sunnis, who are the followers of the disciples and consider themselves what we would call orthodox, are the wealthy and elite aristocracy. The Shiites, of course, uh, feel that they're the only true believers and are in divine opposition to the Sunnis' dynastic sense of privilege and power. It's impossible to condense over a thousand years of history into any kind of brief generalization, but it's safe to say that the conflict between the two groups has continued, and it split the Muslim community along more than just religious and philosophical lines. This disagreement has divided the Prophet's follower along political and socioeconomic lines as well. Right now, the crimes and counter-crimes occurring daily in Iraq are far too horrific for Westerners to comprehend. Atrocity breeds further atrocity, and in Iraq, the explosion of violence is setting up a cycle that may never end. American credibility has suffered a humiliating defeat. One can only wonder what can be salvaged. Pulling out would, in the long term, be a disaster. Staying the course means that American children now in kindergarten may someday grow up to die in Iraq. With the political aims of Iran in the mix, the options for the Americans are precious few. We'll take a look at the geopolitical situation of the region soon. For now, we encourage you to pay close attention. As serious things are afoot, we'll do our best to give you the story in depth. For the News Cube, I'm Jay Douglas Barker.